What's going on YouTube? Earth Power here, bringing you guys a new section. So something we're going to start trying to do around here on the channel is called This Week in Kaijudo, where we basically go over whatever's going on this week in Kaijudo for us here locally. Today I've got with me CVH. How's it going, guys? And we're going to go over today basically the basic deck types that you guys see around your locals and, and just what they are and kind of define them for you the way we know them around here for us. So that way you guys have a basic understanding of when we say rush, when we say aggro, when we say terms like mid-range and tempo, which are new to myself and I would assume yeah, yeah. you CVH, that you guys know exactly what we're talking about. So to get us started off, we're going to start with rush, or what we know as rush. And I guess to give you guys a little bit of background real quick, the three deck types that were pretty normal for me. I think everything fell into these three categories for myself, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. And we're CVH. talking back in the Duel Masters days before yes. we learned all these new terms. Right. The the three deck types that we knew of were Rush, which is basically drop a bunch of creatures on the board real fast, no plan B, and just swing in and hope you win. Like, try to win the game by turn four or five. And then there was Aggro, which played more like... I guess we, there was Control, which played very slow. You wanted to control the board state, disruption from the hand, uh, draw cards and just basically controlling every aspect of the game and, and grinding it down until you have the big final push and just swing for game in like one or two turns. Mm -hmm. And then there was aggro, which was a mix of the two, which it rushed... It was it, aggressive, but yes. it maintained like card advantage, sort of. It, it, it maintained a force, so it could go for multiple turns faster, or, or more so than Rush could. Exactly. So those were the three terms that we knew of coming into Kaijudo so many months ago. And now that Kaijudo is really starting to take off, we've had organized play announced, um, all these names for deck types are starting to surface, which come from magic, such as tempo and midrange. So today we're going to go over basically what we know as the decks and give you guys a little basic description, show you guys some deck lists, show you guys some cards that get used in these common decks, and go from there. Yeah, so make sure you're looking at your like. screen in case you usually put it in a different tab. You know, we got some right. shit going on on the screen, yeah. so just check it out. Sick editing skills. Yeah. So... To start us off, we've got Rush. Uh, in, in its most basic form, you're running a bunch of low drop creatures, level 1, level 2, level 3, and the fast attackers. Mm -hmm. And you're basically trying to win this game by turn 3 or 4. Yeah, the only real spells that the deck uses are things like Common Missile and Bone Blades, which the only purpose they really serve is to clear opposing blockers and yeah. perhaps maybe a other troublesome creature, but mostly it's just about going after the shields as fast as possible. And if you played Magic the Gathering, this might translate as what you know as aggro is what we call rush. Yes. And that's I think that's where a lot of confusion is coming from right now, which is kind of the purpose of these of this video right now for this week in Kajudo is just to give you guys an understanding of where we're coming from when we say aggro and what we mean by it. So that's Rush in a nutshell. Um, hopefully you guys saw the deck list, the cards, and, and get a basic idea that you're just trying to win the game as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So now we have what we know as aggro. And there's a couple of terms that fall into this. Um, tempo and mid-range, basically. Tempo is your basic... You want to contain, or you want to have momentum throughout the entire state of the game. You want to be able to answer your opponent's cards with cheaper cards and basically can keep being aggressive while maintaining hand and, and board presence. Yeah, at least enough board presence to continually be able to answer everything like Carl said. Yes. And of course, as you can see on the screen, Blurple's an excellent answer, uh, yes. excellent example of this. You got cards like Seneschal and Neuron, which basically embody tempo. Yep, and, and Rusalka is the follow-up to make these cards work. Basically attack to get some sort of effect creatures and then follow them up with cards like Rusalka and Bone Blades to mm -hmm. ensure that these cards are getting their effects. And then you've got Midrange, which is a slower paced aggro it's kind of the mix between where it's kind of where aggro meets control we're not quite at control yet but we're playing a deck that's very aggressive but relies on big creatures such as bolt tail on chains um, yeah all the saber bolt variants are good yes. versions of this are yeah, good examples saber of this rather even so it's like you look at a deck like that and you have like six to eight plus double breakers and it's all about just dropping threat after threat and hoping your opponent can't deal with all of them exactly so, and, and that's basically what mid-range is. So these two terms, tempo and mid-range, fall into what we know as aggro. So when we say aggro, or when we talk about aggro, I think, of, I think the easiest deck to, to call an aggro is a fire nature water. You've got water for hand advantage, you've got nature for ramping up and accelerating your mana, so you can get to fire and start dropping your big guys like Bolt Tail, or using your power spells that come with the deck like Tornado Flames and Barrages, to just 
kind of all come together, converge, and create this deck that's aggressive and is very hard to deal with because all of its threats are huge. So, yeah. Our second to last deck type we have is Control. So... Why don't you why don't you take control here for a second? Well, explain what control is to you. Uh, for control, at its basic form, if you've been on the kaijudo.com site, they posted their their own kaijudo uh, their own control build months ago, and of course, it's been through different variations since then. But at the most basic essence, control is all about instead of being aggressive at all, like at any point in the game, right. your main idea is about stalling. Well, not really stalling, but hopefully maintaining board or field, just maintaining card advantage until pushing the game into very late game. At which point, you're able to start dropping, like, these huge disruption cards, such as Skull Shatter, and the finishers known, like, Orion and Tessier on the Unchained are great finishers for control. And it's all about just keeping your opponent's and options and limited until you can just yeah. control the game at the very yeah. end and then go in for the win. Yeah, you're picking away at their hand, and you're killing whatever they drop on the board immediately. You're basically just depleting everything they have until they're at nothing in hand, nothing on board, and you've got a decent presence on board to just swing for game in one or two blows. Mm -hmm. And now, so so what would you call cards when you're running, like, Seneschal and, and Rusalka and cards like cards like those in control? Like, take Cobalt, for, existence, for instance. Excuse oh, me. well, a lot of Cobalt builds I've seen actually don't run Seneschal, mm -hmm. or Seneschal, you know, that's all I really got to say about it. But um, in general, a lot of the time it's because it's a sort of a preemptive measure against opposing Seneschals, because in some of those decks it's just the best answer to opposing mm -hmm. Seneschals is your own. And beyond that, like, even though it can break a couple shields at the beginning... That's not the main idea of the deck, such as a tempo deck like right. Blurple. In general, even yep. though it runs those specific cards that can be good in certain matchups, right. the main focus is on because, the late game. Yeah, because you're saying even with the extra shield you're breaking with Seneschal, if the control deck is doing what it's supposed to, sure, you're getting the advantage off of Seneschal, but you're you're disrupting them late game regardless. Yeah, there's right. other things you're doing. So you're, so you're giving them differently shields. than Blurple. Right, you're not giving them enough of an advantage to potentially come back and, and yeah. answer you. So... That pretty much sums up Rush, Aggro, and Control for what they are to us. Tempo and Midrange falling into Aggro, of course. And now, our, I guess our final category for decks would be the quote-unquote other category. And this is what a deck that basically doesn't fall into Control, Aggro, or Rush would fall into, such as Ramp. Um, Ramp is probably going to start seeing a lot of play as soon as Dragon Strike and Furnace comes out. Stay tuned Indeed. for that. They uh, Set premieres coming out March 16th. That should definitely be an exciting date for all you Kajudo Duelists out there. But um, as soon as that hits, we're going to get cards like Dorado, the Golden Dragon, and... Um, and, of course, uh, Kurigar of the Horrors. Yes, yeah, Kurigar, exactly. That's a good example. Cards which are really expensive, but have an effect to where you want to get them out really early without having a whole lot go on in, on, on field before you get them. So how would you accomplish this? Ramping up, using nature, using cards like Bronze Arm Tribe, uh, potentially Sabretooth, just because if they have to deal with it, it goes to your mana. Yeah, cards yeah, like uh, Drifting Sprout, Toad, Sprout, Sprout, Reap, and Sow. Sprout and Reap and Sow, exactly. Two of the most uh, commonly used spells to ramp up. Yeah, do you say Drifting Toad to leave? Yes. A card like that is pretty good. So. Yep. Using cards to basically throw a bunch of stuff in your mana, try to get to six to nine mana as soon as possible within, like, by turn six, six, I guess, four to six, for depending on Dorado or Krugar. So you can drop them on board and start having them do tons of work before your opponent really knows what hit them. Yeah, and in addition to ramp, because ramp is something that we're probably going to see more of, uh, mm -hmm. there's also then the other categories which are going to be seeing more play. I would call uh, this combo decks, which yes. I guess I've seen a little bit of. Like you've seen decks that try to focus around the Twilight Commander Alcadia's combo, exactly. but as we, as our card pool expands, we're going to have more combos and people are going to try to build decks solely around those. So those don't really fit yeah. into like aggro control, or tempo, etc. Because they're doing um, their own thing. Yeah, they, they've got one specific purpose, and if the and the deck tries to accomplish that purpose at all costs, and if it doesn't, it generally I mean, it loses. Yeah, but, so. you know, well, it's all about the future cards and what we get that determines if that's going to be, uh, if there's going to be a um, competitive variance of combo decks right. in the future. Who knows? Alcadia, like, Twilight Commander Alcadia's combo, I don't know, could get some, like, ridiculous support, and then all of a sudden it just becomes a threat. So, stay on the lookout, guys, and try to uh, keep up with what's going on in your meta. So, hopefully you guys found this video informational, and we'll be doing a lot more of these in the coming weeks. Um, expect... Expect this to be a weekly thing. Yeah, why not? Just yeah. say it that way. So, stay tuned, and um, hope you guys enjoyed our first This Week in Kaijudo. Leave a like. Yeah, leave a like. Check out the social links below. All that fun stuff. And uh, from Earth Power and CVH, check out my channel, you guys. <laughs> we'll hopefully see you guys next time. Peach. Peach.